But balance isn't about time because you can't balance time. It's literally impossible. And if you think balance is about time, you'll never ever achieve it. Expectation is the destroyer of humanity in regards to like the well-being and the fulfillment and the happiness in humanity. Yo, the police in UK, <laughs> do they actually have batons only or do they have guns? No, they don't have guns. What? Yeah, yeah that's good. a wrap. I can't see it. Nah, you're good. I, I, the screen is right. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Lowe's Cut It, and you're in the cut with today's guest and... Uh, what do we call you? Uh, second guest? Two guests, baby. We're going to start number one. My homie, my brother, all the way from the UK. One of the sickest and one of my favorite barbers and stylists in the world, Mr. Josh O.P. What up, baby? What's good, bro? It's good to be back. Man, likewise. And our second guest from the from Chicago, Illinois. You know, he represents Aurora, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yep. Yeah, the one and only the man that's making moves out here that's killing him, man. My brother, Kirby. What's up, Kirby? Thank you, man. Appreciate course, you having man. me. So, guys, it's been two months since I dropped the podcast. As you guys know, I've been extremely busy, but I'm glad to kick it back off with you, man. How you feeling? I'm good, yeah. So, we're just getting off the five-day course, didn't we? So, I want yeah. to say thank you, first of all, for hosting. Oh, um, yeah. So, we came checked out the space last year. We did the podcast. It's almost been a year since the podcast. And, yeah, so, obviously, when we saw the space last year, you know, like, I was blown away by the space. Hell yeah. So we had that five-day course. It was insane. I think the what's actually really cool is, not everyone's going to know this, but we've actually got a couple of students from the course still here, right? Yeah, yeah. We got we, a couple. We, we get yeah. to say that, right? Yeah, 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 of course. We got we, we got, a, got a few of our students hanging, like not hanging around. That sounds bad, but I mean like <laughs> still, <laughs> still, still here watching because that's, but I think that goes to show like how well the course went, right? If, if, yeah. If, if we want to make sure we provide as much value as we can to every single person that we meet. And I feel like that this space and the creative space you've built here um, is just like a home for creativity. Yeah. And I think that is like shown by the fact that the students still want to like hang around and actually watch something like this get produced especially as well. after five days bro. yeah that's what i mean they've been in it for five days and they still want to see more and i think that's what the this space induces i think mm -hmm. the, the the course is the kind of like goes along with that and i think our course is the kind of designed to to make people feel inspired and want to right. want to like uh, become the the best version of themselves and i think that like this space helps that it's like a home for it, a hub oh big time not only that man and that was with us not even like like imagine if we would have had some type of a invite like hey guys we're doing a podcast yeah. later tonight exactly. everybody would have exactly. stuck around everybody, everybody would have stuck around it. like where the last few nights people were just cutting until we basically told them to go yeah <laughs> like, that, like you that's a good thing like it's it just again it shows that we want to create an environment where people just want to keep getting better yeah um, dude and also we got kirby in the building what up Kirby? man i'm chilling man <laughs> um, this feels amazing actually but like you said man after even five days it just everyone wants to stick around still so it's you know we get to that point where we're like hey you know what we're actually gonna go ahead and do our own thing and and they want to stick around so yeah it's yeah. amazing but the energy has been fire yeah, super yeah. cool week for us as well because it's the first time kirby got to educate alongside myself killed yeah. it killed it killed and it it was sick i think that kirby brings a really good dynamic to the team Mm -hmm. um, because I think he shows just like what we do and but how much it can improve your day-to-day -day barbering yeah. skills like Kirby's obviously well known for um, his work and the, the the precision of it and how clean and good it is and how quick but like is. that's what I'm saying but he does it in a way that's showing look the, all these all this stuff that you've seen on Instagram this is like he was like what 30 minutes yeah so 45 maybe for maximum with teaching it but not only that I can say this because we're Latinos he had that Mexican the, the, his model had Mexican hair and I remember when he sat down in your chair, mind you, I've been doing here for a long time, so I could just look at someone's hair and be like, oh, this is going to be a challenge. Yeah. Like, if you don't know what you're yeah, doing, yeah, yeah. this is going to be a challenge. Oh, yeah. But, dude, I remember just looking back at Josh, and Josh is breaking his thing. And the thing about Josh, he's similar to like me. I can get sidetracked easily. If someone asks me the question, I'll stop, and I'll break yeah. that question down for like 20 minutes. And we look, we all look back at Kirby, and Kirby's already blow-drying it, yeah. styling <laughs> it, killing it. I was just like, damn. And everybody was yeah. just like, whoa. So... What so going back to that the DFS formula man like anybody can use that formula mm -hmm. it makes so much sense but the best thing about it is that you can utilize that formula but still Im implement your own ways to it which is what you do exactly and that's what makes you quicker and you simplify it shows how it diverse you it is it yeah shows how diverse it is because like for and that's what our team's about it's about building a diverse team to show just how much this formula will literally help anybody in our industry facts right no matter what kind of barber or kind of hairstylist you want to become right this formula can help anyone to become a better version of that because it simplifies everything into a strategy right to, to a mindset that allows you to know and feel secure in what you're doing through every single haircut whilst mm -hmm. maintaining the freedom then to be able to be the artist you want to be, do the haircuts in the style you want to do them. If you want to be a, a an efficient barbershop barber, if you want to be a showcaser, if you want to work on editorial stuff, if you want to teach, right? It allows 
it, it gives a base and a foundation for all of that, which I, I don't think there's anything else that does it for a full plethora. No, not at all. How did you feel about the Chicago team? What do you mean? Or, I mean, the student. I mean, I know. As in the granted, students. Granted, some people did fly in from, you know, we got, what is yeah, it, Colorado? So was, to be honest, Chicago always represents the biggest selling class by far. I mean, I know oh. this year's a little bit different to judge because the classes are a lot more spread out. Um, but yeah, Chicago always shows love. Every single, single time I've been, um, it's sold out. And I think that the talent here is is just, I mean, it's just growing. Like every single time that there's been students in this class who have been coming to the, the, the classes for the last two years before this. And I've always said like, you gotta, you can't really judge someone on how good they are. You gotta judge them on where they were and where they are now, yes. no matter what's happening, right? Where they, where they were and where they are now. And I was talking to some of the students from that, like, like I mean, about that, who've been coming for the last couple of years. And they're just, they were the ones who were like, I'm just blown away by how, how much I've progressed because of this formula. Facts. And then you've got some people, there was a couple of the guys who, um, were telling me they were like I thought they were like on the online academy I thought they they knew a lot about the wow. formula and because of how good their haircuts were at the end and they were telling me that no this is my first time ever using that or ever wow. hearing about it and I was like man imagine what you would do if you gave yourself a year to practice this formula oh, and that's what God. they're like that the, the standard for this class and I think it, it goes for two things right the standard of the industry generally and the willingness for everyone in this class to learn but also how we've refined the curriculum Right, how we've changed and adapted the classes and learned from every single year we've come and done the tour. Everyone says our fifth tour, right? Every single wow. year we've learned and adapted it. And so we've got the curriculum into such a refined version of what we originally was teaching mm. that I think it's just laying out a simple map for everyone to follow. Right. And meaning that they can seriously progress in a week. And this was by far the, the big, the highest standard of hands-on haircutting that I've seen from like a five-day course on any of the tours so far. So cool. There was man. not one bad haircut. So mm. speaking of where, where where one was to where they are now, like I, I know your story already, Josh. We, we had our podcast last year. We communicated. But my, my question now is for you, Curve. Like, how did you come in the mix with all this, man? Because what I've noticed was weird is you probably don't even know this. I've always heard the name Kirby. But I've always known who you were by just knowing who you how you look, and then it wasn't until like Taylor made, I think you hosted her, something yeah, where yeah. I put two and two together, and I'm like, oh, that's Kirby. Okay, cool. When I started looking into you, I started realizing that you started bringing a lot of heavy talent, and and what's crazy is it's one thing to bring people from the states to your to your hometown or your shop, but you were bringing people from across the world to your shop in Aurora, like out of all places, it was in Aurora and it was cool. So how did you fall in the mix with? With one, Josh, and then two. Now you're a part of the the, the you know the, the USA team as as I am. How did that come about, man? What's your story? Well, to be honest, it took me first year of uh, signing up for the podcast, which was, I mean, for the his education. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Well, yeah, we're here at the podcast, right? <laughs> but no, signing up for his first class, and and basically even now. I told you it's uh, the the DFS formula now is on steroids. Yeah. Right, and that's the, that was a simple way of me telling Josh after this five day hands on. I think I told him the second day, and I was like, bro, what I'm learning now to what I learned the first, the second year, it's it's on steroids, bro. So the information that they're giving now, mm -hmm. it's way more advanced and way more information given into it. But I met Josh, and uh, I don't know if you remember last year I hosted him. Yeah, yeah, I was at, there. At, yeah, yeah at, at our shop, and and after that we just built that with this relationship mm -hmm. that we pretty much did that yeah. today as well, right? So everybody yeah. that was in the educational class, we're all we're all mm -hmm. family now, so we all know each other, exactly. and then we built that relationship. And he noticed that I was still using the DFS formula for a lot of the hair cutting that I do and a lot of the precision cutting. So, but I've also just kind of taken my own style into creating the dfs mm -hmm. formula and using the dfs formula and just you know more efficient mm -hmm. like he said man he was over here <laughs> teaching but by the time he was still like halfway through the cut i was already done but again just speeding up into it and and knowing how to use the formula in a more efficient way so it, 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 I, the best way to, for me to describe it in a sense not not all the way but it's like when, when it comes to fading right for barb is watching What's the first thing we typically do is we draw our guideline. There are steps to fading where everybody does it, but somehow, some ways, some of us stand out from one another, right? It's a lot of different steps and variables that one takes to, to be different. The DFS formula is the same thing. You can learn the concept and understand it because it's so simple, but also apply your own touch to it mm -hmm. that makes you stand out. And I see you doing the classes and all that, and I watch your videos. And, and what's cool is one of the things that I took away from your podcast when we did ours, Josh, was – you said is that when you create content, just create what you do. Don't go out of your mm -hmm. way to create content because then you'll always have to go out of your yeah. way. 
So when you do your content, it's just somebody recording you doing your classes. What did, I say? What did, what yeah. did I say to you today? Yeah. I was like, I already know what Kobe's doing because I just watched the, 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 two seconds of his video and I see him walking towards a shop. Right? <laughs> That's like his signature. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, the shop, we know what he's doing. Yeah. What, what I love about Kobe is he's a go-getter, right? And what I mean by that is he doesn't wait he want he just he knows what he wants to do and he knows and what i think with the dfs formula i think the the first class you did so you did the online a little bit and then you did the one we did uh near wrigley field right yeah and what he said to me in the class he was just like i want to be involved he was like i, I know where he, even from then even when it was a lot less refined and you probably didn't even think you were going to use it all the time at that point but he knew the potential it had. And he was just like, I want to be well, involved. You, you, kind of like you did last year. But you you, you were the proof of concept. Yeah. Like when I first, I went to, what was it, three years ago in Indiana? Yeah. I went to your, no, maybe. Was I was it there too. More? Was, was it was too. way more. Was there. Well, how no, long ago was that? Five years ago. Yeah, it was, yeah, five it was years before ago. COVID. Five he was ago. there and I didn't even know. So that. I, I was yeah. I was a fan of Josh's work. Obviously, if you follow Joshua P, you know what it is. If you don't, I'm going to put his tag on here. You can see it. I went to his class in Indiana. It was just a one day thing. It was a couple hours. One. It was on the night too. It was It was a look and learn. It was. And I went, and mind you, with my experience, to me, at the time, I was like, oh, I'm just going to go watch him, and I'm going to pick it, pick everything up, I'm going to pick it up just by watching him. Hell, and I walked out of there, and I was so confused. <laughs> confused, but not confused as in he didn't know what he was doing. Confused as in, I was just like, whoa, like, I know it works because he's showing us, yeah. but I don't understand it yet. So I'm like, yeah. I got to understand it. That's where I don't think I am the proof of concept. You I think, are. I, I think you are. Bro, let me tell you something. If you, you guys if are. your cuts didn't come out the way they do in all your Instagram photos, I probably would have never signed yeah, up for your classes. True. true. I mean, I would, I, right? We, we wouldn't take that. I mean, I always say it's the end result. It's the end result. It's the end result that you get. Yeah. And then, I mean, for me, to be honest, it's like, yo, I'm going to be cutting next to Josh. And anything you see that Josh finishes looks Photoshop. Yes. And, and, and the video, and the good thing about you is you don't post photos, bro. So it's all videos and it looks amazing. But most importantly, it's like, I said the same thing, right? I finished. I, t I took his five day class, and I was like, "Hey, Josh, so you know, yeah. you, you coming to America? Because if you do that, I want to be a part of that team." And, yep. and I asked him, and here yeah. I am, and and we got good things cooking up, yeah, uh, for 2024, and I'm excited. But I just want you guys to know, man, is this right here the best way to put it for for people that are just watching? Is just like, yo, this is gonna make you. If you're a barber or someone that has zero to no experience and 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 cutting, or yet alone just sheer work or even styling. This is gonna just blow your mind on how easy mm -hmm. it is, and and it's gonna, it's just gonna benefit you yeah. in every way. So I definitely recommend it. I mean, I've proven fe we're here, we're part of yeah. it, and and I'm with it, bro. I think there's gonna be, there's well, not even I think now. I know that what we have is gonna be a huge shift in the industry, facts, because oh, I man. think it's gonna make what everyone is perceiving as super hard, super easy, and I think that. A lot of the, what we've had this year is like, you know what, actually it's crazy because we talked to like a little bit about this kind of thing last year. And I think last year was where I was building my confidence in just how good this formula was because I was starting to see what I consider my proof of concept, which is the team, right? And all of you guys starting to flourish. With another people. Yeah. yeah. So that was what gave me the confidence to go, actually, you know what? This shit is the legit, right? This is what it is, right? And I think that now, like this year, I worked really hard after the perspective tour last year. I'm refining the curriculum, which you can obviously see right now. Um, and then this year so far, all across Europe, now into the States too, we've been having students from all manner of every other like traditional precision cuts in schools. Like mm. you're talking like the big names, like you're talking about Bidas soon, like Paul Mitchell, mm -hmm. these kind of things. And every single student now, because these are the kind of students who used to be like, I can see it works, but now, nah, like, no, nah. now they're all saying, like, they were like, they're coming to me and saying, this is better because okay. it's doing the exact same thing but easier. And one of them actually said, and it was a guy from Italy, and if he's watching, you'll know who you are. I cannot remember his name exactly. It's from Italia Barber Society, mm. was the company who got me out there. And his words were, with every other method of, method of cutting hair, I have to pay attention to two combs widths at once. Mm. He said, but with this one, I can just pay attention to one at a time. Mm. So I'm going to be more precise because I can Facts. focus on the hair better. And so, usually I understand that concept, you know, because, you know, you're following a guy yeah. or a traveling guy, but... It's just yeah. so complicated. Yeah. So basically what, what we're trying to say is that I've always struggled with seeing like... And I know I admire people like, you know, just name a few like Josh and Monica. You got... Uh, What's his name? Oh, sorry if I forget your name. Uh, Lutchman. Yeah. Okay. That are very precise cutters. And I've always admired that because it's such a technique and such a skill. 
But me, I think as a creative artist, I'm, my head's all over the place to sit there and be disciplined to to break one, you know, to grab a certain section, split that in half. So if you're one of those people that are just it could be too complicated and you feel like you don't have enough time in the shop, the DFS format is going to make it that much easier mm -hmm. to, to move the exact same way, cut the exact exactly. same way, but in half the time. Exactly. And, and, and precise as well. And then, even if you are one of those cutters, this is going to give you another level of freedom to become creative with yeah, it. Yeah. Because I feel like sometimes people are so disciplined with it, they lack creativity. They lack freedom and control with it. They, they like give all their control to the process rather than actually taking the control themselves. And like what we stand for as a company is, and for, as a brand and as individuals, is helping other people to gain their empowerment. Yeah. Right? So Fair. for me, like our company mission is to help everyone we meet to see, feel, and harness their own value. Right, and what that means is we want you to feel empowered in what you do. That's why. Look at the some of the stuff we talked about in the the first period of, uh, portion of this course about the mindset, about um, strategy, and about how to structure your lives and about daily routines and stuff. And it's all about giving people and helping them to gain empowerment every day. So you feel like you're in control, like you're choosing it, right? Like you chose that hair to look that way. You Fair. chose. Yeah. You chose to go to the gym at this time. You chose to do this. Yeah. As 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 creatives, and I think. Everyone in our industry is a creative, right? Facts. The way our brains work, we we often need to feel control to feel fulfillment. Yes. Right? It's Facts. not necessarily yeah. just about need, like being precise. Like we've got to be fulfilled every day, right? We need to be as precise as we can, but we need to feel empowered doing it. And I think with other methods of cutting hair, is we don't, not not many people feel that empowerment. Some do, obviously, and for some it's great, but I think for 99%, especially in barbering, and I, I think the, the phrase well, you, I've used many times is about the whole idea that like hairdressing, and at the moment we're trying to translate hairdressing into barbering. And I think hairdressing translate to the barbering haircuts. Mm -hmm. Like you'll do a great haircut with that technique, but translating into the barber shop. I don't think works that well because like I said, hairdressers have on average about 45 minutes to an hour to cut this much hair with zero fading. That's fucking true. Right? <laughs> barbers true. have on average, because again, we're not talking like minutes. all barbers and super high-end barbers that yeah. have an hour. We're talking average. We're talking 30 minutes Max. to do the haircut and fade, right? Yeah. And style and cater for the client. It's, it, it doesn't translate to me. And I think for 90% of barbers, they need something like the DFS formula because yes. they can't not be precise now because this, the in, uh, with social media and the way the world is now, everything's connected. So trends and fashion yeah. and standard is trans it's transferred around the world like that, right? That's so right. we've got like, you look on Instagram, because you're looking on Instagram, you're looking at what should be attained now in your head. So because of that, now your standard, what you think you want to achieve has now increased. You look at different trends, they go on social media. Now trends are, are, are getting passed around the world. So clients are coming in, right? See and expecting better haircuts so we have to get more precise but they're still working on the same time scale and barbers are, are going to want to be as efficient as possible to maximize how much they're going to earn Facts. Right? so they're not going to want to necessarily double their appointment time when they can't double their price at that point yeah so Facts. they need that efficiency and that's where so this is saving lives really this is actually helping people day to day to not only cut hair better but to feel better to, to feel understand the confidence to, yeah. to be confident and when you're more confident you cut better and when mm -hmm. you get all of these kind of things you feel better and when like remember we said success is a feeling we said that on the last podcast quite a lot but success is a feeling and success does breed success so like when you feel successful like su feeling successful through the haircut is going to make you be successful through the haircut when you're successful through one haircut what happens the next one's good then the next one's good then the next one's good yeah and you're human. You're obviously going to have sometimes where you, you, you're oh. slacking that day or whatever. But yep. if you can nine times out of ten feel good every day as well as cook good, you're going to cut even better. Oh, that's fine. I mean, there, dude, there, there was days in my 10, 15, 20 years of cutting hair that I, I would just feel like I sucked. I'm like, why? Why can't I get this fade right? Or I'm taking forever. And there's, there's days where I, now. then there's days where I feel great. Like I'm yeah. cutting in half the time. So for the people watching, why DFS? What's it? What's what's that stand for, and why why did you come up with that name? Okay, so I think I was just about to ask that. <laughs> Go so, ahead, Kerb. Okay. What is DFS? Okay, so I mean, what it means, like literally means. Yeah, what it means, and how how did you like, come? What most made your name? That? Most people know at this point what it means. It's dominant growth pattern, foundation style, right? But dominant growth pattern, foundation, and style. Yeah, but Beautiful. that but that is in essence super simple, right? Super simple. But when we discuss it in the classes, we talk about it more so as the mindset that it really is, right? Because what it means is that what it stands for is your empowerment with your art, 
right? And that's what we want. We want people to feel empowered with what they create, right? Feeling control, as we've just discussed. And that's what to me it stands for. Right. It's the difference between what something means and what it stands for. And that's why we talk about it now in the classes as that mindset, right? The DFS formula, yes, is what it, the three letters it stands for. But even when we go into the detail of the curriculum now, like when you talk about the DFS, we talk about, when you talk about D, dominant growth path, and it doesn't just mean look at the crown. That's it. No, yeah, it just it's broken down now into many yeah. branches. That's fair. So yeah. you've got a full like understanding of every inch of what you're supposed to do. We discussed this week a lot about strategy and about how typically people will teach you how to like they'll teach you the steps of a haircut, right? They'll teach. You, I actually saw right, and I'm going to give him some credit for this. Uh, I just saw Titan Barber do a post, right? Titan Barber, yeah, that's right? my bro. Shout out to Titan. Yeah, that's my bro too. I actually uh, brought him out too. Yeah, gonna, yeah, he uh, did. Yeah. Man, I wish I would have made I'm, it. I'm going to look it up because he actually captioned something Titan's today. Where the hell's it gone? I saw it today. Maybe he's deleted it. Oh no, it was today, right? So six hours ago, he put, there's a difference between learning how to do a haircut and how to cut hair. Now I would say, well, oh. that's what he captioned. And I was like, that's fucking hit home for me. Cause I was like, that's, that's what we deep. do. We that's teach deep. people how to cut hair, not how to do a haircut. And 99% of um, like education is centered around teaching people how to do the haircut. Right? Wow, Not that's a gem. Did he, did he just posted like a, he wrote it and that posted was his it caption? in his caption. Yeah, that was his caption. That's when it, I, I literally. But I went to the when bathroom. You, I looked at my phone, saw that. I was like, bro, that's us. So I, I watched Titans. Like he'll pull he those small clips. I was gonna say he uses yeah, a little right. bit of the, of the technique. Yeah, bro. I just I didn't know if, if I didn't know as I, I wasn't asking. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. Now, yeah. does he use it based off him taking a class with you, or working with yeah, you? Yeah, he's taken. He's taken. He's on the online academy. He's done a couple of classes with us as well. Um, he's actually got a course. He that course he did a long, long time ago. So he didn't use the formula so much then because it was like four years ago. But he had a course on the academy as well. Such a um, cool dude, man. I just like, see him in a, he's the kind of put like. Yeah. But he's the yeah. kind of person where as, as this blossoms and grows, like who knows? He might be involved. We don't know. But uh, but he's been using it. Like and I can see like I he actually had some someone shared. It was a behind the chair, I think, shared uh, his video the other day, and I could see him using it. And I was like, the oh. the, the green I, mullet. I, I think it was. And yeah. I put, I spy the DFS formula and tagged him. It was funny. You commented on it? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Fine. Yeah, no, I, I seen but him in the thing, We're just seeing it now being used. Like, when I go on Instagram, I just see it being used all the time by so many different people. Oh, dude. It's crazy. It's crazy. And that's why I really think that it's really starting to help the the experienced barbers to get that, that level of precision that they're looking for in the time efficiency of the shop. Because a lot of people, they'll... they'll They'll use something different. They'll use most people use a different method on stage, and when they're showcasing, and they even do in the shop. To me, I'm like, why would I teach you something I'm not going to do in the shop? Right, that's, that's what yeah. I'm going to do. And then I have the power to use that as the creative as well. And that's what I think is really important about the formula. Is it's like, it's, it's, your, it's yours to adapt. What did we do this week? Personalizing the formula. How to turn it into your own little formula. Speaking to, of that, I, we we just did a cut. I ended up cutting someone um, two days ago, right? Yeah, yeah, two days ago, and it. And I'll put, I'll put a clip on here so you guys know what I'm talking about. And his hair was just, it was just no, sa all right, in my opinion, there was no saving it. it and, and all day I was just thinking to myself, how and what can I do? He showed me a reference photo of what he wanted. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, I got Josh in the building. Like, regardless, whatever mm -hmm. I end up doing, Josh is here to guide me and, and give me his two cents. So, so applying that DFS formula, I was able to knock that, that whole mountain of hair within I guess if we didn't even talk, it would have been done within three to five minutes. Yeah, you fixed it in like five minutes. Within three to five minutes, and all I had to do now was just blend. But when you when I posted that video, I had people literally texting me saying, "How was that possible?" It was a full like, disconnection. Yeah, it was a full, oh, and not even just full. It was high as hell. Undercut. Yeah, it was, it was high. Like, as yeah. It was under, over the parietal. Bro. Yeah, undercut all yeah. around you, the back of his head, everything. But there was a way. There was a technique that 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 you know. I obviously I use the DFS formula. Josh came and he kind of guided me with a couple of things and. I was able to do that, and I was just like, wow. If I was at the shop without having him there talking, I could have done it in like three minutes. Mm -hmm. And that easy, that transformation would have been just like that. Whereas, and I feel like a lot of barbers, there were probably, it would have been no saving that cut. It yeah. would have just been yeah. Yeah, just a Especially high fade. Especially like, I mean, to be honest, we're talking like barbers with like years and years of experience yeah. that messed up. And let alone, and that's where I think there's one thing for people to, re to learn this formula when they're experienced, but... Bro, like imagine we went like starting off like, like that. When we get yeah. this to the ground, to the root grassroots level, which is where we're going and what we want to do to help the industry truly, right? We, to really truly make us, uh, an impact on this industry and elevate the full standard of the industry. Mm -hmm. We can't just aim for the experienced cutters. 
We've mm. got to help the beginners. And that's what I think this formula really has the power in because it's something that you could pull someone off the street and they would know within probably about two, three hours how a haircut should work, mm. the structure, Facts. like how to structure it. They won't be able to do it in two hours, obviously, but they'll know the structure. Spend another few days and teach them about some basic mechanics. Like you are talking like a week or two and you could get them to be able to do haircuts. Literally, just yeah. just based off the, 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 the foundation of learning the basics. Even like me, right? So you were talking earlier when we were doing the class how um, there's a simple way to edit your 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 work, and then you can go harder and go like on Adobe Photoshop. So what, as I did Adobe Photoshop and I learned it all in a, on a pad and a computer and a laptop, they came up with a new way to do it on the iPad now with the iPad Pro with the pen and all that. Yeah. But it was just so much different. Obviously, if you've never learned it before, that'll be the most efficient way to learn it on the mm -hmm. iPad with the pen because everything's easier to outline with the pen and pencil. But me is just sticking to my old ways. I was always been more comfortable using the pad on my laptop. Mm -hmm. Old school. And a lot of guys that I know that are graphic designers, that's the way they go it. So when it came to cutting hair, I always ended up going back to to my old ways. Mm -hmm. But I finally gave the DFS and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna commit to it. Really. I'm glad you had it here because it, it gave me a second opportunity to witness the five day course all mm -hmm. over again. And it just clicked on me. I'm like, yeah, there's no going back. I yeah. can't go back. It's just, it makes my life so much easier. I would now. say that if you're an experienced haircut, it, it, it just takes commitment. That's, I think that's what it takes. Yeah. But I think this is what we, we said to a bunch of the students this week is, especially some of them who were learning it for the first time. So the mindset you got to put yourself in is you're learning something new. You're not learning something that you already know to help, like kind of enhance what you already know. You're learning something new. And I'm like, imagine going to barber school and doing the haircuts you've just done after three days, four days, five days, no and way. then doing that like after three, four days, no. five days in barber school. It wouldn't happen. When no. you're learning something new and the mechanics, the mechanics are different. It's all a little bit different. And you learn something completely new and you're doing haircuts of that standard. I'm like, give yourself a month. Right. Minimal, give yourself yeah. a bit of time. Give yourself. Imagine yourself in a year if you've tried and try, if you've kept practicing this formula, you will be a goat. Like just, yeah. it, they're gonna get that good within time too. Yeah. Because I feel like uh, a lot of the schools, what they tend to focus on, or just education in general, in the in uh, in the barber school, is you're focusing on clipper work. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. imagine if you're using the formula, right? You get the you're gonna get the clipper work no matter what, right? And mm -hmm. if you're using the formula just to get some precision into it, yeah, exactly. It's game over. This is the thing. You teach beginners how to structure a haircut. Because this is the thing, look at like with this formula, once you not understand about setting your base and guide, right? When you go into a clipper cut, you put your clippers into it, it blends in. Like yep. there's literally like oh my god, it saves you like 10 minutes of blending like, every literally, time. Literally, bro. That's why it kills me now because for years I've always been a clipper first, then shear later. But now after learning the DFS formula and understanding that you can structure the top first, yeah, and it just makes your clipper work better. I cannot use my shears first now. Exactly. I have to Build it. I, I don't know if you remember, that was one of my first questions when I took your five day course. I'm like, Josh, do you always start from the yeah. top? I feel like a lot of UK barbers start top and yeah. then clippers, whereas in American barbers, we go clippers Everyone. first. But you know what the thing is sure. as well? What the best part about this formula is when people ask me, like, do you do the top or the sides first? It's like, neither. Neither. We don't do either first. You, you do the middle. Yeah, you do your base and your guides first, right? Set yourself for the perfect foundation yes. for a haircut, which is great because if you was a kind of if you're at the kind of stage and you're just learning this concept and you normally do the sides first, you could still do the sides before the top if you wanted to, mm. right? Because it's, Cause you it's can already still structure there. it however you yeah. want. You still blend it into your your guide, right? So it's fine. So like it's making no matter how you want to cut hair, you can adapt it and all to suit everything you want to do. Like there isn't anything you can't do with this formula and that's what I love the most like you could do full scale hairdressing right like full on bobs right longs layers soft layers whatever but then you can also then do like short sharp barbering like a men's haircut and it's 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 crazy you can do literally anything with it's this got formula. the foundation in the middle then you got you know you start in the middle you got the foundation towards the bottom and then you get and the foundation exactly. towards the top so it's your choice honestly yep. but i think for, i prefer um cuz how many times have we done a fade and then trim the top, yeah, and then and then, the top and then realize like, okay, I trimmed the top now, I gotta go over the fade again because some there's a yeah. little more weight than I wanted. Yeah. When you start with the top first, and you build that found when you build the foundation, do the top, and then work into clipper. There is no going back anymore. Yeah. No it yeah. It blends right in. It blends it's right easier. In. It's way. And this is the thing. Once you add all the parts of the formula in, it gets easier and easier and easier and easier. 
and it stops you having to what I call waste brain space. Yeah. You can actually focus then on like reacting to the hair, on catering to the anatomy, on on working to create the best image. And as we said, like as human beings, we're very much aware of the fact that we're trying to be the best we can be. And when we're when we're haircutting, when we're barbering, when we're, when we're cutting hair, we're trying to make a haircut be the best it can be. We're not trying to turn it into something it's Thanks. not. We're trying to make that haircut be the best haircut it can be. So to do that, you've got to be able to react to the hair. And that's where it goes back to that phrase that Titan posted. It's not about just learning how to do a haircut. Anyone can learn how to do a haircut. Knowing how to cut hair is different. Oh, that is, and I love that. That That's is absolute, so strong. Bro. Well, it, I, I read like, it and I literally said to myself, I was like, that is a bar. Like just 100%. I was like, That's that, that, that is bar. that is sick. Where do you think he got that from? Chat GPT? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. What, what if he's yeah, watching? Yeah. He's like, damn, those, those yeah, are not yeah. it. No, but not just learning how to do a haircut, learning how to cut hair. And basically what that means is, by learning how to cut hair, you can cut anyone. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter the hair growth, the pattern, the what features. Was the, that, that phrase we put on the board. We said your ability is not, not about your it's not about what you can do, right? In regards, when I say your ability, I mean like your consistency is not about what you can do. It's about how well you can adapt what you do. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. Like it's not just about being good at a haircut. It's about being able to adapt your knowledge about hair to suit all haircuts, all hair types, all customers, all situations. And again, it's based off of everything. It's not even just about what they look like. It's about what are they going to do with it? Are they going to style it? Are they going to do this and that? And that's when you understand in shape and you understand all this. But I think that all this kind of gets diluted in people's minds when they're learning like in most forms of learning precision cutting because they don't understand half of what they're trying to pay to be learned. They don't understand what they're learning. They don't understand why they're learning it. There's no relevance to it. And I think that's where one of the things that we I think we do best is helping people to build a connection to the purpose, right? Helping them to build a connection to their own purpose, like in their life. That's why we work so hard on sort of psychology and mentality and, and goal setting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But also helping them on day one to build a connection to the purpose of learning, like what we're about to learn, right? Because again, it's like anything. If you're an educator, you've got to You've got to develop a skill of allowing your students to open their mind to you. Like, we look, think about when you're in school. When you're in school, the best lessons were the ones where you probably went in and probably didn't do much for the first five, ten minutes. The teacher let you settle into the class, maybe even talked about something different for the first five minutes. So you opened your mind up to them to prepare to learn. Worst classes were when you go in first thing in the morning and from the first minute, it's just you like stuff right on in. the board yeah. and you go straight in. I mean, it, it's like the gym, right? You're yeah. not going to go, to, if you've never been in the gym, you're not going to go and fucking kill your exactly. first workout. You'll never exactly. go back. But if you slowly get into it, all of a sudden, guess what? You're buying better gear. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you're looking better. You're feeling better. You you might go get tan. Your workouts are going to be better. Your your your, your weights are going to get better. You progress as you go, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it just goes back to what you were saying. If you had a message for anybody that's still skeptical, because I'm not going to lie. I've had conversations with real good hair cutters and nobody that mm -hmm. that's, I would say that you personally know, maybe mm -hmm. people that know you. Mm -hmm. um, or have taken your class and a lot of people have said like yeah you know I, I like this formula I like, I like how he cuts it um, but they always had a but mm -hmm. but this but that now the good thing is I don't remember what their but was but based on what I've learned and what I personally witnessed and then seeing your proof of concept like Kirby and everybody else on the team I know the formula works because yeah. one of the things that I've always told people is that if I've watched plenty of educators and a lot of people just like to tell you what they're doing and how they're doing it, but nobody, not everyone could tell you why they're doing it. And what I've noticed about you is that every single question that has been presented to you, you've always had a great answer that proves that the formula works. Mm -hmm. So if there's a message that you have for anybody that's skeptical about about this or, or un, 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 like just isn't sure, what would you say to them? Ask me about it. Oof. Damn. Damn that's <laughs> deep. That's another bar. He's got a 20-minute answer. Be yeah, because like there's an answer. Like I can He said he got a twenty minute answer. <laughs> he got a literally twenty minute answer. But it's true though. Like I, I this is the thing now. I'm at the point and I think we, again, I have my proof of concept. I have a full scale team that is growing and growing and growing daily. We've just start we've just signed up people for the team in Israel, in Romania, wow. in Belgium, right? We're signing people up in all over Europe, but also now look at how many educators we have here. But we have a team of 15 in the US, which is growing and growing and growing. The amount of applications we get in every day for the US, which isn't even stuff that we're like, from this class, I can guarantee you we get at least 10 applicants. Oh, right? Thanks. Like this time the models that we got this week. Oh. This time next year, we'll probably have a team of like at least 30 to 50, right? It, it, there's some huge stuff coming that I can't even talk about fully, but there's some, some crazy stuff coming that I know how much other people believe in it. And this is the thing, like I was, 
always quietly confident in myself. Like when the first time I met you, like you would ask questions that I would be knowing myself as to why, but I can I can almost guess and probably hopefully speak for you in fact that I think my energy around it has changed a lot over the last year or two yep. into being like a case of going from something like a, oh, we know this works into being like a, no, no, no. This isn't just a thing that works. This is the thing that's going to take over. Mm -hmm. And when I say take over, I don't mean it like it's like anything else that doesn't exist isn't good. It's just the case of like any education it's gonna system. Be, it's gonna be any education point. system should be updated with the times and with Facts. the development of everything. We can't yes. keep teaching people the same thing we taught them 20 years ago Facts. when the world is different, right? And the world has changed. What, as you said, what customers expect is now different. But what they don't expect is if, like barbers can't have the thing to take an hour on every haircut, they don't, right? So we need some form of educational reform to be able to help that. And that's why I would say that, that my response to anyone who doubts it would be to say, ask me, ask me about it. Or like, not even just that, look at the proof, right? And when I say that, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I think a lot of people are still very new and probably unaware of the fact of how big our team is because we've kind of been building in silence a little bit because we've been prepare preparing to really launch this. Now, I think over the next year to two years, people are going to really start to see how much of a team. Look at this year, right? Peter's had two sellout classes already. Yours is nearly sold out next week. So we've got another one in Chicago in a week and a half. Wow. Well, that's nearly sold out. Yep. When See, is it? Uh, 28th. Is it the same weekend that, that I'm going to be out in um, Vegas? That you're no, about? no, no, it's, no, uh, no, no. It's oh, this is like completely a, different. Like yeah, yeah. Two week, no, What's the date yeah, on that? 28th of August. It's 28th? On Monday. 28th on, Monday. on a Monday. Ah, I'll be in Dallas. But yeah, so then we got the... CJ's done a couple. CJ's got another couple of classes coming up. Peter's got another two or three coming up. Um, CJ and David teaching one in Spanish in Dallas. Right, There's so much coming already this year, but then next year, as you said, our calendar for next year is oh. going to be laid out in the next few months. And what I think when people start seeing that, that's when people, anyone who's maybe skeptical wouldn't be able to be skeptical anymore because it's a case of like, it's just, it's just a thing now. You know what I mean? It's just, it is what it is and it's helping so many people. And like, I think if you, again, my proof of concept is not only in just in the team, but it's in the fact that all of the students, all of the people, all the return students, look at this class alone, we had about three or four return students from last year alone, one coming from two or three coming for two, three years in a row, right? It, that's my proof, right, to me. And so like, that's why I'm going to ask me about it because I will be able to give you the answer to, to whatever the doubt is, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, like we've always said, we, we don't even, like, we're not trying to force anyone to like it. It's a case that I never did. I never, I never asked to be an educator, right? I never asked anyone to love the formula. In fact, what used to happen was I used to do crazy creative haircuts and people used to be more intrigued sometimes about how I did it rather than what the heck it was. I think everybody wanted to know how you did it. You know what I was just talking to Kirby exactly. about earlier today? Um, how you, when you teach your five day seminar, you go straight into theory, mm -hmm. which is cool because you, I think in your mindset, you want people to truly understand what they're getting themselves into before you get on to the creative cut. Mm -hmm. But I was telling Kirby, you know what I think would be a great idea is if day one, think about it, bro. Anybody that books your class for the first time, especially for five days, and especially for, you know, for, for what we, you're charging for five days for such a, experience people want to see you do the magic trick first mm -hmm. do the magic trick first now let me ask the people that are out here waiting guys we were just talking Fellas, about that so if josh would have started day one set everybody down and he would have brought a sick model and he would have just done the cut in front of you guys breaking down the formula but at the same time you guys are seeing it be done custom model styles it up phenomenal ass cut and then he says now I'm gonna show you how to get this cut, and then started the theory. Would that had impacted you guys a little better, or would you prefer the theory first and then watching them cut after? Right? It would be like somebody, like a magician, showing you the magic trick, and everyone's like, "Now I'm gonna show you how to do this magic okay. trick." And that's exactly what we were talking so about. Josh. We, we talked about this the other day, yeah. like earlier. And what's crazy is, so I don't know if you remember, that's what I did last year and the year before. I did, wait, wait, the class that I joined? Yeah, I did the mentality, I did the mindset in the morning. So you probably think about it as we did theory early, we didn't, we did the mindset theory in the morning. Then I didn't, I didn't do oh, any theory on day one. Oh, you, you did it. So you you did, did a model. But, but this is good. You did that mullet, so that pompadour mullet, yeah. right? Yeah. So, we're all, so we're always trying to improve. So what the whole idea was, we went this side, see if that one was any better. But then thinking about that, then if the consensus was, no, go back to last year's one, we know which one works. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing, what the, we actually, I actually talked to someone about it earlier. I was like, the, almost scary thing is we're such in our infancy like we haven't even got our standardized set of curriculum yet we're still in like figuring testing yeah we're still in like pilot episode mode mm -hmm. imagine when we get this stuff set right oh. where bro 
it's as you said, like this next year, like you think it's on steroids now. I, in my <laughs> mind, once we get again, curriculum development. Curriculum development's always been just me. Yeah. Right? But thanks. over the next year, curriculum development's going to start being all of us. Everybody, right? everybody, Getting everybody everyone's has peace. minds together. Yeah. Smudge, imagine where the formula is going to go when everyone's minds come together. I almost didn't recognize the formula because obviously I took it last year and and I was like, okay, Josh is going to, you know, I'm, I already took his class, so I got an idea mm -hmm. what to expect. And I came in here and do not only the, the your presentation change, but the way that you're te you use technology change. Mm -hmm. Now I see you with the iPad, you're writing stuff shout down. Shout out Basio. And, and his, I was just to say that. What did Basio say? I said, shout out to Basio. Oh, he, shout out to Basio, yeah, right. Yeah, he put, he put me onto that. When we did the hair show, so then when we did the OP hair show, right, in uh, in Birmingham. <laughs> so we have it this year as well uh, in Birmingham. And there's this, uh, it'll be a little surprise next year uh, where the location is. But okay. um, this year, still in the same location, still in Birmingham. And uh, we had like sold out, 250 people. Basio wow. comes on. He's like, yo, hook my uh, iPad up to the screen. I'm like, oh, this could be interesting. <laughs> All right. Next thing you know, he's like presenting this thing on the board. Everyone's that is like, so cool. Everyone's bro. going, "Oh my god!" And I'm like, yeah, "You got to yeah. show me how to do that." <laughs> I'm, like, I'm taking that one. That yeah, it was, yeah. So, it was. It was. It so. And I'm watching. I'm seeing all this, and and it was just like that's one thing I can appreciate is innovation, man. You're yeah. not the same. You're not in the same place you were last year. No. And and the formula is the same, but now you're breaking it down in, in such a better way. So I could imagine what next year is going to be, yeah. especially with our minds together, bro. Yeah. It's just it, like I'm excited, bro. So. Good luck with that, bro. I'm 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 excited to see where this goes. I'm, I'm it's an honor for me, bro, because I mean, we go way back. Most people mm -hmm. don't even know. I've always been a fan of your work, and this is why I immediately invited myself and told him I need to be a part of your American mm -hmm. team. I'm here. Like, there's no reason why I'll do whatever it takes, and you welcome me, and, mm -hmm. and now we're here, bro. I'm excited. Yeah, the f the future is the future is gonna be insane. I think that's where, like, especially with now, obviously, we only like we moved over to the states like last. Last week, last week, right? It obviously feels a little bit longer already, but like, yeah, last week we've moved over to the States. And I think this is where people don't, like not many people know just how much, like the last two years, right? The business that we have and built has scaled so much, right? And we've put all the work into scaling it, but we've also had so much other stuff going on that in a lot of times would actually hamper the business, right? Mm. But we've still kept that trajectory going. So that's why I'm like, genuinely like it is so exciting to see where this is gonna go now like we're here is like full-on go time yeah I was right? just about to say that. because now like my like my energy switch has been insane i honestly the moment i spent a couple of days right in the states i got my energy back because again like for me the the thing we need to remember and i think people need to keep more consciousness consciousness of is their energy and where it's best and the for me this is when i talk about like home because people ask me like oh why did you move to the states all this kind of stuff and for me it's home and what i mean by that is like home what i said this earlier right home is where your energy is the purest mm. and when i say purest what i mean it's like the richest the best it's ever going to be the most powerful it's ever going to be and so for me like I've always been like this. Whenever my, my mom and dad used to say, like when I would come back from being on tour in America, I was like, that it was that the most go in me I'd ever have. And even like some of our team in the UK would say, like they used to love it when I come back from the perspective tour because for like two months solid, I was just like super high on energy. And so like now, like Bring that back, yeah. But now that energy is full time. Yeah. And now the energy. Now I'm also surrounded by the people with the energy. And again, that's where like you have to, have to, have to pay attention. Like not just to people's words and their actions, but literally their energy, right? Because energy, for me, energy shows people's actions true purpose right because sometimes people act in a certain way but the energy is a little bit off you can pay attention to energy over the action Facts. and so what what we're doing now is we're gathering and building the team it's what we're built in silence so far because we built a team based on energy and commitment to the purpose obviously and being on the same mission but energy more than anything and now i know we're surrounded by people who who have the same energy who run the same mission who want to do the same thing and our team is stacked right Thanks. and we're getting stronger and stronger and stronger as i said there's some super cool stuff coming that it's going to be insane and that's where i think that not only is like our future bright but what i mean by ours is i mean ev like everyone right the whole of our industry to me everyone is family mm -hmm. any single person who wants to grow and be better is family and that's when i say like we're doing this for the entire of our world Right, right to get every make help everyone to to harness their value, and because the end of the day, like I talk about the energy, like with barbers, right, and the barber shop, right, we are literally energy givers, and one of the reasons why I put so much emphasis on essentially mindset and 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 strategy and fulfillment and how to gain fulfillment and how to be successful and feel successful is because 
as barbers, we, we understand giving energy. We energy we give energy all day, every day. And we're very, very aware and very, very accustomed to looking after and helping customers' mental health and what we can do for them and what we can provide for them. But it's so, it's not very often at all that we st- stand and actually check on ourselves and see, like, am I in the right place? Am I around the right people? Am I That's doing true. the right thing? Am I taking the right steps? Do I feel good? Right? If I'm going to be an energy giver, how like do I actually have energy to give? End of the day, like if if you if you put other people first, you're not putting them first, right? Okay. You have to come first. And what I mean by that is you have to fuel up your energy. I won't repeat the story about the car journey because I say it nearly every <laughs> single time <laughs> I ever say anything. But it is right. You have to make sure you're fueled at all. Time. I still use that car story, bro. bro it's it, it's so. It just sums up life for me. It just it sums is. up life because you just have to make sure your engine is fueled at all Thanks. times. And I think that, again, if you're a barber, like it's a little bit different to a lot of people in a lot of different industries because a lot of different people don't give out energy all day, every day, right? And in the, the day, like you've got to try to gain balance in okay. your life. And what is balance, right? Balance is all balance. I think balance gets overcomplicated, right? Balance is simply where you give at appropriate levels of fulfillment to all areas of your life, right? And most people quantify balance as time, right? But balance isn't about time because you can't balance time. It's literally impossible. And if you think balance is about time, you'll never ever achieve it. If you think balance is in is balancing time in one day, even worse, mm. right? Because think about what realistically areas of your life do you, should you be balancing? You should be balancing realistically your personal life, your career, your ability, like in technical ability, right? your uh like i'd say like emotional life like your love life or your family right Mm -hmm. and then also your financial life right so you should be balancing all these five areas in these five areas do will you have the time every single day to balance all five of these absolutely fucking not so why are we even expecting it from ourselves expectation is the destroyer of humanity in regards to like the well-being and the fulfillment and the happiness in humanity so like it because at the end of the day, that's what expect. When I say that, I don't mean it literally because good expectations is good, right? And setting expectations for yourself keeps you to a standard. But what I mean by that is like expectations can is, is a cause of negative emotion, mm-hmm. right? Because like at the end of the day, like if you have a, I don't know, a fight in your relationship or whatever, right? That's mostly probably going to have come from the fact where your expectations weren't aligned. Right, Thanks. because like yes, it might be their fault because they've stepped away from the expectations, but it's also your fault for maybe expecting something that they weren't prepared to deliver. Right? Obviously, it's all situational, but like we got to get to a point right, where we're looking after ourselves and we can be as fulfilled as possible. Right? And 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 I just I just get so passionate about helping people Bro, to feel good. You right? Yeah. At twenty nine, the mindset you have is 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 so. But this insane. is the thing. Like I, I just wish people would look at balance in a way that was actually justifiable in regards to achieving it. Because the thing is, right? Balance is not that hard. Right, balance is just needs realigning in terms of expectation. Because what you need to do is you need to think about balance in sort of a way that you can actually achieve it for for you and your life. Balance is different for everybody, right? Because you all you've got to do is fulfill these five areas of your life, right? And at the end of the day, people quantify as we said as time. But when you the the example I use is like when you spend time, you literally spend time. You never get it back. And when you're spending time, what you're normally doing, you're watching TV, you're scrolling on your phone, you're out for a meal, you're with other people. So like you don't really get much fulfillment from spending time. What you do get fulfillment from is creating moments, mm. right? Moments last forever. Time is gone in an instant, mm. right? So if we focus on right. moments in all areas of our life, these five areas of our life, focus on creating moments, achieving things, right? That's how we're going to get balance. So we've got to strategize our life to be able to fulfill these five areas. Now, our expectation of that fulfillment is going to define our balance, mm. right? If we align our expectations of these levels of fulfillment, we could achieve balance. Now, what I would typically do is try to balance a week rather than a day. Facts. Right, because I can probably hit that in a week of all five areas. But if I know I'm having a really, really busy month and I might not be able to balance it completely, maybe my balance that month shifts to a, a, a whole month. Mm. So I might think, okay, this month I'm going to balance the month. So in that month, I will give as much fulfillment as possible. Like we all know, like how my life, you know too, and traveling, right? I don't get to spend as much time with my wife as I would ideally like to. But so sometimes it will be like maybe one day per week. If it's one day per week to gain that balance, that one day is hers, right? Mostly, I'll get, I'll do some work in the morning, and you do, do some you, morning, work in the afternoon, but like generally, that's all hers. If we only yeah. get a month, right? In a month, if we only get a couple of days in a month, because I've been away a lot, that means those two days we might do something bigger. We might go somewhere for the weekend, right? Because then we get the same amount of 
fulfillment from that than yeah. most people do from spending every night together. Yeah. That's fair. And it's all about balance, right? And balance isn't unachievable. Most people tell you that balance doesn't exist and you can't get balance. But I just don't think we're looking at it right. And again, as we said, that like expect what I said about expectation doesn't mean like you shouldn't have expectations. You should, right? You should know and understand your own expectations. But it's communication of your expectations that's key because that's how you align. Are they correct? Mm. Right? And expectation then with yourself is about communicating with yourself, right? Because that's how you set your own standards. And at the end of the day, no matter what you're doing in life, right, the only standards you need to meet are the ones you set yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But the standards you set yourself, right, they're going to define the kind of life you have, right? So, so yeah. we're talking about balance, but it's about standard, it's about expectations, right? It's about moments, it's about fulfillment. And balance is achievable. We just got to understand more about it. And that's why I put so much effort into not only delivering, and I'm hoping they liked it, but I'm, I'm delivering the ideas of like psychology and uh, strategy and how to sort of like run your life in a way that is going to be like disciplined and strategic. And, and as we said, like having the strategy so that you encompass discipline, so you can live uh, the most fulfilled life possible. But also like, I, I just, I, well, I hope they liked it. Did you like it? <laughs> they loved it. <laughs> they loved but it. that's why I spend so much, not only time delivering it in the class, but so much time preparing it. Yeah. Right? Because if you think about what you see on the presentation, that's what the end product of it was. It might be, bro, you might have thinking that goes on in here on some paper. Take it from me, bro. As, yeah. a, as, a, as a world-renowned educator, I look at you and I am. There's very few people that I can look at um, and be so impressed because I get, you know, the feedback that I get for my education. And then I, and then I sit here and I listen to you talk. I, I feel like, man, those you ain't doing shit. <laughs> Like, <laughs> like I really, I'm not even lying. I'm saying this like with 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 all due respect. Like I'm like, like damn, bro. Like that's education, and education is just knowledge, right? Understanding is not knowing something. It's understanding it because when you mm -hmm. understand it, you're able to teach it. Mm -hmm. you, you could you could try to teach something you know, but if you don't understand it, how can you teach it? Yeah. I mean, Kirby was just talking about this earlier. I was like, you know, it's one thing to be an American barber and to do what you're doing here in America and kill it. But it's another thing for us as Americans to go to UK and do what you're doing here in America over there. Mm -hmm. You are coming from across the world and doing the things you're doing, selling out five day classes, bro, all over the U S not even just in Chicago. And you're not even from America, bro. And yep. that to me, I tip my hat off to you because yeah, I might be doing this and doing that. Um, in America, and I could probably sell out a class here and there, but do I do I feel in me that, hey, maybe I could go to UK and could I sell out a five-day class? Probably not because, one, maybe I haven't built a foundation as strong as yours. So I have to truly understand. So I think this, this is where the DFS formula comes um, in hand for me because I feel like once I truly master it mm -hmm. to the level that you understand it. You will be going back over there. I will be going over there because now, guess what? My confidence mm -hmm. is going to be there. Yeah. Do, do I? Do people know I can fade? Do people know I know how to do designs and beards and all that? Yeah. But once I master the art of not just knowing how to do a haircut, but knowing how to cut hair. Told you. Once you, you, you said the confidence. Yeah. Once yeah. you lock this in, this is going to be. I'll go anywhere in the world. Bali. Right. I'll go to Bali and start what teaching I, people. What I like about, the, about what you're saying the most is the psychological side of it. Yeah. I think that yeah. whole mindset and the psychology behind it is very important like an everyday barber we forget about mm -hmm. those type of topics and then we, we do just, yeah. we just go through the motion we turn into machines behind a chair you know yeah. and just go it's go, a rat go. race yep. or you're just yeah. you're just a hamster in the wheel and it's not getting anywhere and, mm -hmm. and, and 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 you get caught into then you get caught into a mixture between like not looking after your own mental health but you also get caught into a, that the trap of like seeing the client as money then right mm. when you get into that rat race and you get caught into seeing barbering as a job yeah. Right. When you get into that, right. And it place. happens a lot for yeah. a lot of barbers after 10 years. Exactly. I speak on this a lot and I yep. do say it at all my classes. What happens after 10 years? I know a lot of good barbers that after 10 years have gone into the CDL truck drivers. Oh my God. Yeah. Or, or FedEx. You know, what oh. happened? You lose that passion. You yeah. lose that fulfillment that he's talking about. That's the thing. That, and that's, to, sorry to cut you off, but no, that, that's good. psychological burnout, right? And this is the thing physical burnout is easy to spot. Physical burnout is easy to spot and it's relatively relatively easy to remedy. You just need a bit of a break, right? Yep. But psychological burnout is is A, harder to spot, right? But B, if you do try and remedy it by taking a break, that actually emphasizes the psychological burnout, right? Because let me tell you, from in my honest opinion, psychological burnout is simply when you no longer gain fulfillment from something that you want yep. to gain fulfillment from. Mm. And this is where like psychological burnout affects relationships and marriages, it affects friendships, it affects business, it affects everything. Because 
depends the context of a relationship, right? If you don't like continue to explore new things to do and new experiences and go to new places and do new things, right? The you need to do stuff like that to keep the same height of fulfillment, right? Because fulfillment is only fulfillment if it is as good as or better than last time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? That's why I said be addicted to fulfillment in all areas of life. But right, that is where psychological burnout hits you because what happens is you become stagnant, right? And you you stop mixing things up, you stop doing new things, stop gaining new information or trying new haircuts or trying new different stuff. And then you gain psychological burnout. You get psychological burnout, but you don't even know you've got it at first. No, you right? you don't spot it. Yeah, you just think you've been a bit bored. You think you just you think you or you think our oh, work's been a bit shit recently. Yeah. And really what's happening is like that's why I say do one haircut a week for yourself. You said it in the class. Yeah, yeah. One, one haircut a week just for you where you handpick whoever it is or you pick either someone who you've been struggling on to progress or so a haircut you don't like too much or you're not as good at to progress or you pick someone that you absolutely ace every time to feel good and to get some content. You pick someone who's going to let you be creative to get some content, That's whatever nice. it is. Do one haircut a week so that you maintain that level of fulfillment, right? from what we do so you still feel empowerment that's where the formula is even better because it gives you that empowerment daily Um, but yeah this is what it is you've got to watch psychological burnout because most people do it they'll get psychological burnout they'll feel like they're getting a bit depressed at work they feel a bit down but what they'll put it down to is they'll think it's physical burnout so they think what they're doing is they're just getting tired they need a rest so they'll take a few days off work and what they do is because they're doing something different they've actually gone out and about and done some stuff they feel like they don't need it they're fulfilled right yeah from outside of work and next thing they know because they're fulfilled from outside of work they've started to attribute this feeling to the physical thing they're doing. So they're like, it's barbering, makes me feel shit. I don't, yeah. maybe I don't like it anymore. Maybe I need to do something else. They can they drop out and now they're in a job they don't like at all because they, they, they had something they actually loved, but they'd just forgotten how to love it more, mm-hmm. right? They'd forgotten how to stay in love with it. And that's the thing, relationships, we said t- they take work. Like you have to learn how to stay in love, not just to be in love, right? And I've been in to those fall, shoes before. To know? fall in love is easy enough, right? I think yeah. a lot of people could do that. To stay in love is what takes work. And this is the thing. I'm talking about this like it's so deep because it is fucking deep, right? There's a deep. reason why. And I, and I actually said this on the last podcast about like barbers getting trolled for like tat- tattoos about barbering and stuff, right? But as we said on that podcast, it's because we feel so good from cutting hair, right? Mm-hmm. And life is about what it makes you feel. And that's where like all these things in life that had the potential to make you feel this good, they have the potential to make you feel that good forever, but you've got to understand and learn wow. and strategize how to s- keep that feeling. And this is barbering is the exact same as a relationship. That's 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 what I said. I don't know if you caught that video that I said in Colorado. We did a little runway show, and one of the intros was a video of me saying that. That like, show looked good, by the way. Whatever it was. I didn't see what it was, but that show looked oh, good. Oh, it was awesome. And shout out to you know Rumble in the Rockies, my guy Tunes. Uh, there was an intro video where Poppy Blunts was like, "Well, how do you stay so creative? Like, how do you keep moving and growing and?" Like, where, where you keep that passion? And I simply just said, and it was crazy because we did that in one take. Like, anyone that could watch that video would be like, how long did that take, you guys? We did it in one full take, and I didn't know what I was going to say, but I'm really good at improvising, you mm-hmm. know? Because when you improvise, this is literally, if you're genuine, it's going to come. Well, today, way, naturally. Yeah, it's going to come naturally. Today's a good example. Right. right, so I sit there, and he asked me, like, on camera, we got three cameras rolling, and he was like, oh, how do you get so creative and this and that? And I literally just sat down, and I was like, just keep learning. Yeah. Learn something I was just new about all the to time. Say that. Every keep. time you learn something new, you're going to light that fire back yeah. up. And as long as you bring it back into whatever it is that you're mm. into, you're going to you're always going to feel that fulfillment. Exactly. And yeah. when it came to me, I mean, after 17 years behind a chair, I was there, but I was burnt out. I thought it was more of a I was like, yeah, hair, maybe I could do something else. But back I learned photography, I learned videography, yeah. I learned editing, I learned all these things that I brought back to my craft. Mm-hmm. I learned education, I learned being an educator. Yep. And all that I brought back into my path. And now I live that fulfillment because mm-hmm. I know that every time, like even now, right, I get to that, that little point where I'm like, I don't know how much longer I could do this education stuff. How much can I keep traveling and going there? But if I learn something new that can that can help mm-hmm. build that even more, then that fulfillment comes in and I yeah. want to yep. keep going. Same thing with you, the stuff that you're doing behind the scenes, the shops, the, yeah. the things you're opening up. You're, you just went through a whole process that, that you, it cost you some money, but you learned. Yeah, it was all a learning experience. And you know, like we spoke you, about it. You a learned it. Yep. But now, because you know it, now you're like, I'm going to come harder now because I yep. get it. You got that. You understand it. And mm-hmm. and this is crazy that you talk about that. And it literally, when you were t- saying all that, it just brought me back to that scenario. I'm like, just keep learning. Yeah. You know, the world, the world is changing. And I think every I, day. And, I, and just like you said earlier, the world is changing. I feel like, and especially a lot of the classes that I do, is that, you know, staying relevant and, and educating mm-hmm. yourself, you know, so elevation through education. This is, the, I feel like it's key. Oh, yeah. 100%. What, like... Um, I used to say was 
that your for us it'll be our haircuts, but in general it'll be like your craft, right? Your craft makes you relevant. That's what gets you relevant in the first place. Thanks. Right? Your energy is what keeps you relevant, right? Being you, progressing, growing, and this is the thing, right? Your energy, like when it's at its purest and at its best, right, is when you're fulfilled, right? It's when you feel good, Thanks. and that's where like you've got to curate a world to let you feel good, even in your discomfort. And that's one thing we focus on a lot this week, helping students to understand how to strategize their lives to even in their, when they're trying to push themselves out of their comfort zone, how to make that scenario the most comfortable, mm. right? There's a reason why like top athletes, right? And performers and artists, right? will have like a pre, pre-game pre ritual. They'll have like a, a pre-show ritual. They'll, they'll do the same thing that makes them feel good so that they are the most comfortable they can be before they become uncomfortable. That's and that's the thing with cutting hair. You want to learn a new haircut, right? Why are you doing it in the shop? Why on earth are you doing this show? You were just talking about that at the class. Exactly. Yeah. Why are you practicing during performance? Right? You're performing. So take yourself out of the situation. Not just because you're not going to do it right. You might, but put yourself in a comfortable situation to practice something uncomfortable. So put yourself in a situation where there's no time limit. The customer's not paying. He knows you're trying to do something even new or develop or whatever and grow. So all this scenario is just as comfortable as possible, nice and relaxed, and you can just focus on the one uncomfortable situation, which is the haircut. Facts. Most barbers will try and do it to a paying customer. <laughs> Within just, 30 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And make the whole situation 10 times more uncomfortable than it should have been. So now they don't, they actually then, they attribute then pain to like this learning a new thing. And this is what happens to a lot of barbers. I think like a lot of these barbers who will probably be semi against like this sort of like transition in the industry to becoming a bit more precise and better haircuts and better service and all that. I think it's because they more than likely have tried it a little bit once. Right, mm-hmm. probably come fucked it up a little bit, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. And then thought, now nah, it's not for me. Fuck yeah, that, it, fuck that shit. The, yeah. we, we just need to stay what we're doing. We need to but stay then, down here. Because they practice it right there and then in the shop. Exactly, yep. exactly. Facts. Exactly. Like, customers don't Did want this. Did you see this. my trunk? Remember I opened up my trunk yeah. today? What was All it? All the doll heads. Do like, this yeah. head yeah. 50 no, don't don't let a cop there. pull you over, bro. <laughs> Did you guys see that one video on, on I think it was TikTok where... Uh, there was a wig. Uh, there was a, a, a wig was hanging out, so they called the cops, and the cops thought there was a body in there, <laughs> and it was just a damn wig. Yep. So that's literally that was dude, funny. Curb opened up his trunk, and I was like, "Whoa, the hell's all that?" Yeah, there's like fifteen dollars heads. Me. In a uh, in during COVID, I was filming an online academy tutorial, and uh, someone actually <laughs> called the police on me when I was cutting a mannequin head. Really? Because right? they thought I was cutting hair during COVID, and uh, in I was in the barber shop. I had the curtains open. Stop. Everything you, you couldn't. But the blind, doing the a, blind doing a mannequin. I was doing a mannequin. Yeah. Police turned up twice, right in the same day. Yo, the police in UK. <laughs> do they? Do they have? Do they actually have batons only, or do they have guns? No, they don't have guns. What? That's I mean, so... I mean, like a certain a certain facet of the police like force carries carry guns, but they have to like nine times out of they have to be like specifically sent somewhere. Like the, the actual general police, um, most batons. of the time, just have like yeah, they'll have the sticks, but then they'll they, I think they'll have, some of them will have a taser maybe. Okay, uh, but generally no. Um, for, for everyone that's watching, uh, how how safe do you feel out here in Chicago? <laughs> Mid. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's my job to keep jobs safe yeah. here. Jobs yeah. safe, like yeah. we're not allowed to post anything. Uh, I do, I do love Chicago. I do love Chicago. <laughs> Chicago's cool, but yeah, like it's a wild city. It's a wild city. A beautiful wild city. Yeah, I'd say safe. I'd say I'd say that I felt safer here than I would if I was walking around London. No, really, out yeah. here. Yeah, nice. That's what's that's good. To, that's good to hear, man. Yeah. Oh, any other words, Curb Josh? You want to add? I would say like, okay, so here's a question. Talk to me. Because this is the question that I'll get asked a bunch, but not necessarily feel like I ask or even, or maybe even because like, I told you, I'm not a good interviewer. I know I just talk, right? Yeah. So I feel like sometimes even if we got asked it as a collective, as a team, my instinct will be to answer the question. So like, like what I would say is like, A, like where do you see this going? Ooh. Like what in general? The, the, the industry, the formula, us I was as a just, team. I was just about to say the the what in general. Like so, I would say a, like as a whole as a what we're bringing. You want to go for first? <laughs> it's a big question. She asked me a similar question. It wasn't it wasn't strictly based on the DFS formula or what we're doing, but she just asked me what what do I see the industry going? Now, it's really hard to, you know, there's so many regions in the world, so much going on, so many different universes of, of barbering going on, so. But in my vision is, is what I'm seeing is that it's no longer going to be the difference of cosmetology and barbering. I think it's going to eventually is going to mm-hmm. fall into one sooner than later. It's no going to no longer going to be like, hey, do you want a men's haircut or a woman's haircut? It's going to be, do you, would yeah. you prefer a shorter style yeah. or a longer style? That's what I see, and and I think Babyliss is going to be one of the first to bring that to you guys. 
where I see the formula is is just getting a better understanding to do and achieve what I, where I see the industry is going. Mm -hmm. Because even if it is a woman that prefers a shorter haircut, you're going to be able to understand that using the DFS formula mm -hmm. and executing that properly. Because to me, what I've noticed when it comes to barbers is that sometimes barbers will reach out to me and say like, hey, how do I do a pixie cut? But in reality, bro, like, it's not that hard. I no. think you're just probably more intimidated because maybe it's a girl. Yeah. But if it was a guy that wanted yeah. like a shaggy buzz cut. So I think once, and I, I love the fact that you said that earlier, we are building in silence mm -hmm. because a lot of people it may not see in, 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 you know, on the gram and all that, but they don't see us communicating all the no. time. You know, they don't see what you're building as much, but once we get it down packed and we're yeah. able to really show it, it's really going to take, I take think it by storm. The funny part is I think that, a lot of people think I'm being loud. But right. Like, I, haven't no. I haven't even started raising no, my voice. No, not at all. Not at all. I haven't not even started raising my voice yet. That, that's actually a good question. But um, it's just like, as a whole, the DFS formula, yeah. for me, I feel like it it is going to be something that can be generally, genuinely used daily. Mm -hmm. right? what did and I, I mean by like in a curriculum, like yes. in a school. Yeah. Yes. Right? Because if you can teach this to, you know, the new generation, I feel like the new generation is coming out as monsters already mm -hmm. from, from the schools because they're so advanced because of technology and just social media in general. Mm -hmm. Right? If you want to really learn how to do any type of haircut, you can just go on, what's your favorite uh, university? My YouTube, man. YouTube free, university, free, right? Free. So mm -hmm. you can jump on there. You're going to learn this. But the DFS formula, if you can learn it right off the beginning... Imagine yeah. if that's your Imagine curriculum. That that's the thing, and I, I think that one of the one of the students actually this week talked about. She was saying that she it was this morning. She said she went and she, she did a haircut like yeah. on one of the days after the courses. It feels so said, long ago, because right? She hadn't because she hadn't like fully gone through with the course yet. She didn't really do the formula itself because she hadn't finished the course. Mm -hmm. But she said just from being on the course, she understood hair way better. And did the hair like, even, 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 even You're in, talking about, um, I forget, Lucy. Lucy, yeah. Yeah, so she said even in her old process that she normally would use before she's going to obviously start using this, she said that just being here made that better. And that's what yeah, I that's, think. I think whatever they, whatever anyone goes through in their continued education afterwards, a platform of the DFS formula will be the GOAT. Yep. That will put them in a position because, again, barber schools can benefit because they get a bit of a better reputation, right? Their barber benefits because not now they can leave school knowing how to cut hair guaranteed, which means they can earn money straight away. And the barber shops benefit because they can hire people who are out of school straight away. Mm -hmm. Because I think that at the moment it's, there's still probably um, a stigma about hiring people who are straight out of school just because you don't know how – you can't utilize them Bro, straight I away. I talk really. about this all the time. Yeah. I, I love taking students – I absolutely love yeah, it. Why? Yeah. Tell me. You, I mean, what do you think the answer to that is? So you, you can love show them the formula. Yeah, so you can show, you can show them the formula. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you said we teach them uh, DFS formula right well, off the jump. But I'm saying like there are moldable and then yeah. basically even an example, the students that were here, they were, have the experience even, you know, 10 years, five years. And you're teaching them this formula that instantly you're going to want to just give up on it. And then you just go back to your old habits. Mm -hmm. Right. Facts. I believe in like trusting the formula and going through the formula. And actually, like, you know, going through the mechanics of it, you're going to understand it and you're going to trust it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get the results. Yeah. I no, think. no and then, But, like, back to the same question as a, as, as a whole, as, you know, where the world is going with barbering. And I say this a lot in a lot of my classes. I feel like the industry is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. And what I notice, you know, as a business owner, I get a lot of questions. You know, I shout out to the artisan team. But I get a lot of questions like, hey, what is it that you're doing, you know, that is – changing the, the the just the demographic of barbering in the area that I'm in, mm -hmm. right? And I always say, you know, it's staying relevant and staying mm -hmm. educated with what is going on today. Yeah. Right? And and because a lot of shop owners or even barbers don't want to change that mindset of yep. sticking to their old ways and then they burn out. I, I tell the people, my students, and when I worked at a shop, I was like, don't ever let a client know more about your industry than you. Yeah. Because when people will come in, and I'm talking about the days where people fold out papers, like before yep. cell phones. <laughs> I would know every time somebody came in with a photo, I promise you, I knew who cut that hair. Mm -hmm. And I knew what that haircut was, what it was called. And there was barbers in there that would be like, oh, okay, yeah, let me see what's up. Yeah, okay, that looks cool. And then they walk up to me, Los, how would I start this? And in my head, I was like, do you even know what that's called? And the whole time, it's the client educating that barber. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I've seen that here. It's what's in. It's what's mm -hmm. hot. And that's what bothered me. It's like, how... Like, like, are you just here because you're looking at it as easy money? I could cut this person and make a $20 mm -hmm. bill? 
Or are you here because you have a passion for it? You said it yourself, it's changing every day, man, and staying relevant and staying with the times and, and going back to what I said, keep learning. Yeah. Don't stop learning. Keep learning, learning, learn the DFS, and, and who knows what's coming after that, man. Now, back to you, Josh. How do you feel and what do you think it's going to happen? Okay, so with, with the industry as a whole, I, I agree on what's been said. I think that it, it I agree with the, it's, I think it's just going to become a case of uh, almost one industry regarding hairdressing and barbering as such. Um, but I, I think that the, it's tough because the industry's changed so much in the last 10 years. It's like, it could change again. Like we did don't you, we don't even did know. Did you call it ten years ago? Did you no. think it was gonna be where it is today? No. Me neither. No. I wasn't even no, a barber. Man. Maybe five. I, I would say e five. I, I wasn't even say. a barber ten years ago. You weren't even a barber no, ten years ago. I was just about to say that. I was like, wait, hold on. So I'm, what did you do before barbering? I was at university. I was doing geography. Geography? Yeah. I was uh I was lost, bro. Like I, I many times I was lost before I was cutting hair. Like I really was. And that's one of the I reasons think a lot why of were lost. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I used to say in all my classes that barbering has saved us all from something. Yep. I was like, whether it's a life of crime or whether it's just a life you were, you, you were confused about and you weren't sure and you weren't happy and barbering has saved us all from something. But that's why we love it so much. And the, um, I think that, that that's for me why I work so hard every day because I think, and you asked him this question earlier about what is my motivation. And, and I talked about that, like a lot of the reasons. And I talked about the one reason last time about my fear of zero. But I think the other one is just because for me, barbering gave me a chance of happiness. Like this industry gave me a chance to actually smile every day and be happy every day and, nice. and for, be fulfilled every day. Now, yes, I think I was smart enough to be strategic to, to put myself in situations where I continue to be fulfilled because as we said, you've got to keep walking, moving forward, one step forward every day. Um, but I think that because it gave me that, that chance to be happy, I've, I just want to repay it essentially. Or I want to just give my all to it so that I can just repay the industry for that chance to be happy because I felt so lost beforehand that, now I don't. I feel like I have my purpose. I have my reason. Thanks. I have. I have like something that I connect with. I have a connection to that purpose, right? This industry and the happiness it gave me was what brought me back to my wife, right? So we like. Thanks. There's so much stuff that this industry gave me that for me it'd be I'd be criminal not to give my all to it. Thanks. And that's why, like, I think like um, there's just a huge difference in my, my opinion between like when someone starts barbering and when someone becomes a barber. Right? Becoming a barber is different to doing barbering. I think a lot of people do barbering as a job. And I think not That's, many people I, are barbers. I see that coming in now. Yeah. Yeah, where it's because it's like, cool, right? Yeah, yeah that's, Kids get that's into it because the image yep. looks cool. And that's the thing that, I, what I think is going to happen is if you're actually, I think the industry is going to go through a huge surge, continue to go through a huge surge, mm -hmm. right? But, oh, bit of fluff, weird. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but I think the industry is going to go through, continue to go through a huge surge of people, of an influx of new barbers, right? And I think that what's going to end up happening is, is what does happen. We see all the time barbers dropping out after a six months two to years. a year, two years, yeah, two years because yeah. what they do is, and again, this is where I think sometimes social media, like it has its obviously amazing parts, and I'm a full advocate for it, but also can be a de de bit detrimental because. People come out of barber school or they learn to cut hair. And I know I'm rich to say this because I was teaching after a year. I know, right? Because I don't mean like that. I never intended you were on that. You were teaching after a yeah, year? Yeah, but, but I never intended on that. Like, mm -hmm. I was never, my, like, I never asked for that. But I think kids come out, right? Uh, and they think that if they, they should be at this pinnacle of ability. Right off and the bat. In like a year. Yep. It was like maximum two years. When they're not, they get that psychological um, discouragement. Burnout. They start to feel dis discouraged by it and then they drop out. Mm -hmm. And what I think is probably going to happen is a period of coming in and out for people. And then I think then a real strong point of the industry, because I think what will be there still is the people who are at the core absolutely love it and have a deep burning passion for it. And then I think we'll be, and I think if we can utilize what we know is coming with the DFS formula said, working with schools, right? Getting it into the grassroots level, teaching people from the ground up with the DFS formula, right? And I then get to a point where we're just left with a real strong set of uh, uh, barbers and hairdressers and hairstylists to really push this industry forward to become what it should be where as you said it's seen as a really reputable job job not just where it's reputable like it's cool but where it's a career where you can really start to earn money like the amount of barbers now like again obviously right now it's not a huge percentage but the amount of barbers earning six figures now 
is just far surpassing what would ever have been imagined 10 years ago. Oh my God. Right? So look, that alone shows the potential. So for me, what we need to do, in, and in my mind, the DFS formula is a great vehicle for it, is like we said it in the end of the class today, like barbers like ourselves who are super passionate about moving forward and pro progressing, as much as like there's a lot of us and we, we feel like a, we're a great huge community, I still think that we're only probably taking for twenty percent, twenty percent, thirty percent of the industry. 20, yeah. Yeah, yeah, maximum, maximum. So there's still like seventy to eighty percent of the industry who, not non-believers, that sounds weird, but like you know what I mean, who, who like who are, are you either unaware of the potential yeah. or fighting against some of the potential because they're scared of change. Yeah. Right. But I think we need to a firstly by example. But I do also think like anything in life, people have to have a connection to a purpose. Right. So these barbers often probably haven't seen anyone in their world benefit too much from it or only see it online right and again what do we say if you don't have a, an emotional connection to someone's journey you often feel jealousy and envy right so what's probably happening is they're seeing people they don't have a connection to getting the success feeling like that as, as that they're not going to be the person to make it so they end up wanting to give up and end up resenting it but so we're going to need to keep growing and growing and growing so that they end up like seeing that as a part of their real life. They see people doing this and achieving these things. They know it's achievable. Mm -hmm. And that's where I do see the DFS formula and some of the other stuff we've got coming has been a great vehicle for that because I think it is a way to get their level of ability up without it necessarily having to what in their mind would be kind of go through all of the hard complex stuff mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so I think that then gives them a connection to a purpose they're like okay this is something I could actually do and I can get on board with because that is easy and I can create that with this yes. right and I'd be quick once they get that they'll start to see their level going and once they see they're getting better they'll be like well I can probably charge what they charge now because my work is is just as good as I'm going to charge that now next thing you know you've, in, you've infiltrated in a way that 80 percent 70 percent who weren't really on board at the start. And that's where the industry's got to go over the next 10 years. It's to, like, if we keep growing as our 20%, essentially, or 30% maximum, what's going to end up happening is a fucking split in the industry where we essentially have almost like countries have sometimes where there's like, you're either poor or you're rich, and that's about it. And we don't want that because that's going to be a huge conflict in the industry. Mm. we got to make sure we can't, we don't go, ah, oh, well, they're not like, actually, fuck them. We don't want to like, no, no, we've got to help these everyone get up because the industry is only going to be worth what we what we know it should be worth if everyone's up here if everyone's in we can't be worth what we think we should be worth if the people are down yeah. here and some people are up here somebody We've gotta get everyone up here somebody asked me today they're like los man and i think that's i think that's the the psychological mindset of a lot of people right they're like los so what's your end goal like what's your what are you trying to do mm. bro? what's your end goal and i looked at him and i was like just to keep going yeah. hard to give it the best that i got because if you would have told me this five years ago, if I would have told you my end goal five years ago was like, I want to be on a magazine mm. or I want to be on stage for a company, then once I hit that end goal, there's nothing after that. But if I keep telling myself, I want to just go, go hard every day, exactly. give it my best, you'll exceed all expectations, dude. And, and, and I think a lot of people have end goals mm -hmm. and you shouldn't. You should have goals. I love. You shouldn't have end goals. I love what you're saying. So what well, you say, give your best because something I really, really believe in and I posted a while ago, I actually posted about the online academy about it, mm -hmm. is I said that like too many people are striving to be perfect rather than striving for their best, mm -hmm. right? And what I mean by that is like I've never, ever, ever strived for perfection, right? I just believe in giving the best out that you've got at that time, right? If I look at our branding, if I look at my business knowledge, if I look at our online academy, right? If I look at any of what I've done over the past six seven years or we've done as a business for like the last six seven years if i look back at some of the old stuff i'm like oh man that's horrible right and i think that about my haircuts i think that about branding i think that about quality of production i think about everything right but at that time that's the best that's all i had right that's the best that i had at the time i look back at the dfs formula when we first started the curriculum it's the first time you learned it i look back now and go yeah i can see flaws in that curriculum but this <laughs> is the thing i couldn't then but I, I took on board every bit of reaction and got it better and better and better. But I never strived to be perfect. If I waited for everything to be perfect, I would. we literally said this earlier, if I waited to be perfect, I would still be sat in my mom and dad's kitchen wanting to be a barber, Oof. right? Yeah. That's literally where Bengals I would be. Deep. If I'd have waited to be perfect. You didn't wait to be perfect at the start, you just did haircuts because you wanted to. But barbers always give that mindset up once they get good enough in their head. That's they nice. then keep trying to be perfect and then they work in a level of fear. Hello, buddy. They work in a level of fear and, and anxiety because what they're doing is they're fearing judgment, they're fearing people laughing at them, they're fearing not being good enough. So they don't put out what they can do. They don't put out their best because they're waiting for their best to be worthy enough or yeah, good enough. No. But you're never going to be good enough. You're it's never, never going to feel that way. You're That's never, people, ever, ever going to feel like you're good never enough. Be so a just perfect put time. it out. Exactly. And again, in the day, if you, if like the, the phrase I've always said is like, we'll do things before you're ready. Yes. If you wait till you think you're ready, someone's beat you to it. Yeah, right? facts.
Someone will beat you to it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Guys, we are we are a minute, an hour and twenty one minutes in. I told you, I talk all night. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah. We gotta save room for the third podcast. True. Uh guys, wow. I mean, DFS formula, all I can say, Joshua P all the way from the UK, who is now out here. I didn't want to say it, but now you said you're living out in America yeah. now. So there'll be a lot more going on. If you have any questions as far as what this is about, what the course is about, or anything at all, man, you could DM him, DM me, DM Kirby. Uh but other than that, man, you got Josh Kirby. You guys got all your cameras in front of you, man. Any last words you guys want to drop for the okay. for the viewers? Go ahead. Over to you. Oh man, I just I feel an honor, man. This last five days have been incredible, and oh. again, I have my own uh, hands on coming up on Monday, August twenty eighth. So if anybody's interested, just shoot me a DM. And and again, shout out to my wife, who's always continued to support me. Oh, we were yeah. just talking about this yeah. earlier, and all my kids too. So and the artisan team. Yep. yep. So, All right, Josh. Mello, come here. My last little bit. The last thing I want to say is I want to touch upon just an issue I actually posted on threads, right, recently. And the reason why I want to say it is because it kind of goes along the mentality that we talked about tonight, but it also goes into just helping people to, like, in that balance, right, when it comes to, say, like, self-care, right, uh, and, and time out and that, like, burnout and stuff. We have to remember all times, right? And I wanted to pull this up because I think it's a really good point to make to a lot of people because a lot of the times we like, often use self-care uh, and time out as like sometimes an excuse, right? We're all guilty of that at times. Mm -hmm. Me included everybody, right? But the phrase that I said was self-care and time out can turn into avoidance and procrastination real quick. Mm. Keep your discipline. And that's my, that's my lasting message. Beautiful. All right, guys, man. Deep. That was deep. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We're back. We're going to keep dropping them hopefully more often. But until then... Uh, on to the next one. Let's go. Salute. Let's go. Oh, that could have went for like two hours. Yeah.